Have you ever heard of the custom of organizing ghost weddings for the dead? I am Bora, a researcher living in America. In 1990, I took a trip to a remote rural area in China to do scientific research on the spiritual culture and beliefs of the ethnic minorities there. That place was a small village in Shaanxi Province, China. To facilitate my travel, I hired Apeng, an experienced local guide, who was there to assist me along the journey. To enter this village, we had to go through places with rugged terrain, where vehicles could go no further. We had to walk the rest of the way, about three kilometers of forest roads. As we arrived at the village, it was already late afternoon. A Peng took me to a strange home, where I would stay in the village. After the introductions, A Peng had to return back to his hometown. Upon arrival, I saw houses that were built of stone, wooden pillars, and thatched roofs. Inside the house, the gray, moldy walls were overgrown with moss and lichens. There was absolutely no electric light, only the glow of a kerosene lamp. There was an old couple there to welcome me. They were very kind and cooked a lot of delicious local specialties for me. That night, I woke up at 2 a.m. to go to the toilet. With only the glimmering light of the dimly lit kerosene lamp to guide me through this cold, dark, scary place, I sensed that something was about to happen. That feeling grew even more intense when I began my journey outside to the toilet, about 50 meters away from the house. To make it easier, I opened my backpack and took out the torch that I had brought with me. It was super dark outside, surrounded by the sound of insects. After walking for a while, I must have been caught by some kind of a noose or snare around my feet. I was suddenly hanging upside down from a tree by a rope bound around my ankles and feet. Looking down, I saw a strange couple standing on the ground, looking up at me with their cold, sharp eyes. They were talking to each other in a strange language that was unfamiliar to me. I couldn't hear them clearly. Next, I saw the old lady walking toward the rope that I was hanging from in the tree. She pulled out a knife and severed the rope. After falling to the ground, the only thing I could remember was that I was very dizzy. But before I was able to collect my senses, the old man suddenly rushed over to me, striking me on the head with some object like a heavy stick. The next time I woke up, my surroundings were dark. There was a strong smell of tar, wood, and tea. I panicked when I realized I was lying in a wooden coffin. I tried to scream, but no sound came out of my throat as if I had been paralyzed by the shock of what was happening. I tried to open the coffin by hitting it with all my strength, but my limbs were weak and stiff with the heaviness caused by the trauma. Lying inside the coffin, I heard people outside. They were talking and chattering. They seemed to be busy organizing something. However, due to my limited understanding of my Chinese knowledge, I was not able to understand what they were saying. A moment later, the coffin lid was opened and two muscular young men pulled me up. Under the weak yellow light, I could see the house and the coffin itself. From where I was lying, I saw strange decorations made of red silk ribbons. They were hanging everywhere, forming large bunches of flowers. I was being dragged in front of this couple it was so surprising to see that behind the couple's seat was an altar with incense, lamps, and fruit. In the middle of the back wall was the word Shun Si, which meant double happiness. I was startled to see myself wearing a Chinese groom's costume. Looking up, my heart felt a strange sense, as if someone had been suffocated. I saw a girl in a bride's dress with a red scarf covering her face situated next to the old couple. The girl's hands were loose. Her head was tilted to the side. Behind her were wooden splints holding her body up. 
It appeared as if she was still alive, seated in an upright position. It was then that I realized she must be dead, more terrified. The corpse and I were pulled out in front of the old couple. A big fat matchmaker was continuously saying something I couldn't understand. Then she held my head down to perform the ritual. If I was not mistaken, this was a Chinese wedding ceremony. The people there were surrounding me, all of them with the same cold, scary faces. At that time, I could do nothing but follow. Perhaps they had given me some kind of drug mixed in with my drink, which caused me to completely lose all my strength. After that, the corpse and I were taken back to the coffin. It was a large coffin, big enough for two people. And then, the coffin lid was slowly closed, followed by the sound of nails being hammered into the coffin lid. In an effort to securely close the coffin, these people seemed inhumane and cold. As the smell of the rotting corpse was rising, I felt stuffy and began to feel a cold sweat breaking out. Then, even more terrifying, the headscarf slipped and revealed the pale face of the girl's corpse. Apparently, the corpse opened its eyes and glared at me. Oh my God, my heart froze. I could see that there was still blood remaining in the eyes of that corpse. I tried to make my body flutter with the intention of escaping, but my whole body went limp and soft without any strength. Meanwhile, the coffin was being lifted and carried to a place, then lowered into a deep pit. I heard the frightening noise of the shovels as I could clearly feel the shoveling of dirt on my head. I was about to be buried alive, here alongside the corpse of the dead girl. I was traumatized by all these terrible things that were happening to me. But then, at that very moment, I heard the screams of a group of people, and I realized that one of them was A Peng's voice. In that moment of suspense, I saw the coffin lid open. It was A Peng and two other local police officers. Fortunately, they arrived just in time to free me. A Peng said that because he forgot his belongings, he came back to retrieve them. When he found out about this scary incident, he ran down to the town and reported it to the local police. But it took a while for them to arrive because it was difficult to navigate through the rough terrain. But thankfully, they made it just in time. After returning to the United States, I began to learn about the ancient Chinese ghost wedding customs. The event was so extremely frightening for me the custom of this Chinese marriage ritual is still practiced in the same way and customs of this dark ritual, even up to this very day.